Uh, so I'm out here in the desert by Salt Lake City. Ken has brought me out here and we're just in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of freaking taxis. At a tank testing facility. <laughs> what the? We got Nitro World Games this weekend where I'm racing with this dude, Steve Arpin. We're gonna have our brand new Fiestas out here this weekend. So in preparation to race those lovely Fiestas, we're gonna race these Crown Vicks. Seems, seems legit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it seems totally relatable, right? <laughs> I well, just I love the fact I haven't raced rallycross in a little over a year. And we're Maybe. in a tank testing yeah. facility. Yeah, like, so how appropriate. Seems, seems totally uh, logical. So you're taking the Rocky IV approach. Yes. <laughs> Back to basics. No, but this weekend, Nitro World Games, one of the craziest rallycross tracks in the entire world. Actually, the craziest rallycross track in the entire world. This dude is brought out a very nice Ford Fiesta for me to race in a brand new CBD MD livery. And he's done a lot of development on those Fiestas since I last raced them. He's actually taken the, the focus out of the car that I used to race in the World Rallycross Championship, dropped it into that Fiesta. So we have uh, basically the old Fiesta that I used to race in GRC, and now we're racing it here at Nitro, brand new livery on it. Really looking forward to that. Big jumps, but today we're out getting me back into Rallycross. I see, we're on a track with zero jumps. <laughs> this is great <laughs> practice. Yeah. I gotta get some some sort of seat time. <laughs> so this is how we're doing it. Now, I think we may be able to get airborne if we try hard enough here today. I mean, that's the goal. It's always the goal. So this place is owned by our buddy Cole with uh, Life Motorsports. He's actually out here somewhere to come shred with us. What's up? That's a good entrance. <laughs> that is impressive. <laughs> it's all the car, man. It just makes it too easy. Well, thanks for having us. Welcome thanks guys. for setting all this up. Man. Good to have some real rally crossers out here. And this guy. What's up, dude? What, you don't consider the game <laughs> crew we sent out here? Uh, uh, they were, no, they're not. They're not, <laughs> rally, they're not real rally crossers. Not even close. Not even close. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about all this, because this is, A, it's hilarious, but it's rad. I just wanted to have fun on a budget, and I, I got online and I could find that you could get a rear-wheel drive car with a V8 for 500 bucks. And so that's where it all kind of started, is uh, Crown Vic, you know, they work for police taxi duty, and they hold up to a lot of abuse. So in America, there isn't a real grassroots level rallycross available, so we kind of had to start it on our own. I, I reached out to people to buy cars, and they weren't willing to. And so I went out and bought the first fleet of cars, <laughs> and I just started the process, and then everybody came to my party, so <laughs> hopefully we can just make a bigger party out of it. But I think before that, though, you and I actually had the conversation about Norwegian folk racing. Oh, it opened my eyes. Right, and we talked about the fact of how they operate over there with very cheap cars, right. and that they have this system to where if someone builds too good of a car and wins with it, that the competitors can actually buy that car and they have to sell it. So it's a, it's a very good way to keep the competition very even and keep the price down. So then I had that discussion with you that was like, man, how do we make this happen in America? Because we need grassroots rallycross here in America. It doesn't exist. And you are doing something here to help that, but I think people need to understand what grassroots is. Mr. Arpin here can kind of explain, because most series, like if you talk about like Supercross for kids, like they start when they're like five Absolutely. and start in little bikes and then work their all, the, all their way up. NASCAR? Well, the path I took started on go-karts and really there's so many different different disciplines that are all funneling to the same direction right it's like you got the NASCAR Cup Series which is the tip of the pyramid and all this different type of racing underneath it funneling up to that and it's so affordable so much fun there's like I used to dirt race there'd be 10 tracks in a 300 mile radius that we could go racing any day right. of the week and that we was wanted. a dirt oval it was dirt oval so it's it's obviously you're learning that from a very young age and yep. all sorts of different forms oval racing to build your way up to NASCAR but with Rallycross here in America. We have the tip of the pyramid. Yeah, we have, <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's up yeah. there on its own. Yeah, yeah and so, that's it. And that's where this is awesome because it's a first step towards that direction of, yeah. of developing something. That's yeah, but, but back to the point though, with NASCAR, we have that system and we don't have that here in America for Rallycross, but in Europe, it's you know, standard. Yeah, Everybody but, there, it. but there's all these different forms, you know, like Oliver Salberg, Pedersen, 
you know, was a Norwegian champion in cross kart racing, which is rally cross, but in something built like this. Right now, the Sierra car is... So it's the ARX3, so part of the America's Rally Cross right. class, and we're the entry level class to be at the same track on the same week as top pro teams. So this is as entry level as you can get and still run with the pros. Right. So you get to learn the tracks, uh, learn the facility, learn the people and figure it out. But you know, we've got very, very grassroots over here with the Crown Vicks. Yeah. And then this is the first taste of the sweet nectar that is pro rally cross. So right. um, we just need to fill in that gap a little bit more. I think it's all of our responsibility to, you know, we love it. We know what the tip of the iceberg looks like, but we need more of this stuff going on to get people enthusiastic and excited about it. Yeah. And just to explain too, our ARX3 is this car right now. This is the Sierra RX3 car. Yeah. And then ARX2 right and now ARX2? Uh -huh. is the basically the Ford Fiesta that's a it's a spec series. Yeah. All the cars are exactly the same. It's tube frame with a Fiesta body on it. All yeah. the engines are the same. So they're about two seconds a lap off the top cars, roughly. Uh, anywhere from two to up to yeah. like five at some yeah. tracks. It yeah. depends on the, tr yeah. like it was it, really loose at the mid-Ohio, so yeah. I think yeah. all-wheel drive is good. Then the top class obviously being the supercars, right. which is like what Steve and I race. As far as going to that series, yeah. if you want to go and try it out, this is the best option basically is grassroots. Oh, now what yeah. we've tried here is, is to really take that <laughs> step low <laughs> and show it yeah. a real We're true... We're not afraid to step it back. Right, but that would basically be like a national championship or a world championship, which this would be the grassroots at that level. Right. This is though is what we need basically at the real almost like state level, yeah. basically. Great to have a rear wheel drive V8 car. You know, they're a thousand bucks. All these cars are about a thousand bucks. So every time we go back, fix them, make them a little bit safer, a little bit better. But that's kind of about the price point they end up with. And most people that get out of them have never had more fun for a thousand bucks. And there's parts galore and oh, junkyards all around the country. Well, I've got two parts not... cars just sitting here. They were race cars and now they're parts cars. So just to be clear though, these these are Ford Crown Vicks yep. from what year? 2004 to 2008. There's no roll cage in these. No. Is there any sort of safety? Well, this one car has some safety in it. So we <laughs> have a racing got leather seat. interior. Yeah. That That's the grandpa styling. spec. That one was sweet. So that, that is one thing that we have to kind of say that is different than what they've done like in Norway and these countries, that there is a spec that does require yeah. some sort of cage at a certain level. All right, well, next step is racing. So, Steve and I are gonna race. We're gonna put Mr. Zachary in the car too. To race. <laughs> um, is this initiation day? Uh, yeah, Re first rally cross for you, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Hell yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, but we also, I, I, I wanna see lap times. I wanna see what these things actually do. And the only thing that we really have to compare against in real rally cross is this. Since we know kind of the time of this car off. Where we need yeah, to be. so this, we need you to hop in this car, set some lap times for us. So then we can judge the Crown Vix versus this actual real grassroots car that races on the big track. We know that this is a few seconds off of the supercars. We, we On a good, fast, hard pack track, we do pretty good as two wheel drive. So I think that'll give a really good delta to the, the real race cars from the, the common street car. Pretty impressive for a little girl. Yeah, well, the power to weight ratio is quite nice on these things. <laughs> No, well, I was there. 900 pounds. Uh, I came over. 200 and, uh, horsepower. I've driven them once. I ripped around. It made me stop. I was having too much fun. <laughs> it handles like a rally car, moves around like that, but it's just really quick and really basic, really small. It's a, a great way to get started.
favorite part of that, right? Dude! <laughs> part two. I can't wait to see what the cameras look like. Don't, don't take that line. There's a clear, distinct line over the hill. Don't take that one. You want to turn right. We'll like, put some always, cones on. Zach, like, we need cones over there. I was like, oh, he's making us a really jump. Firm. <laughs> Did you get your uh, time? Uh, yeah, you guys will have to ask him for it. Uh, okay. Well, he kind of threw him off the back when uh, you took off, so we yeah, just have to wait until he gets there. He's, he's, he doesn't want to lose his spot on start finish. Uh, <laughs> no, he actually hopped on the back for a minute, but you were going yeah. so quick, and he bailed off. <laughs> it was like the high-speed run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said you should stay here. Sorry, OP. So 46, 4, 7. What was lap one? Uh, 50, 9, 7. <laughs> it sounds like we're going head to head out here. Uh, yeah, but I, I want to see, I want to get some practice in that isn't head to head. But the only thing is, I didn't realize it was so tight on the gravel part. We've got like the start line area. We started five cars touching, but yeah. we we're only racing three, so. Yeah. So there's Wait, where's the start line? Room? <laughs> uh, right, right up there where I started from. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's the start line. Whole shot. Yeah, yeah. Better get whole shot. <laughs> well, let's go practice. Hell yeah. Crunchy boy. Look at the amount of sand coming out of the bumper. There's, there's trees and sand rolling out of the bumper and other parts dragging. Well done. What was the time? We'll have to go with uh, OP for the official time. All right, official time. 51-7. Ooh. 51-7. Now we've had a look at the track. We'll go for a start position for the uh, final. All right, Jack. All right, let's, first let's practice, get it. First qualifier. Here we go. No pressure, no pressure. Is that coolant pouring out of the front? It is. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, our your last lap was at 51.4. Oh, wow. <laughs> All the other laps are 52.2, 52.3, 52.4, and then yeah. a 51. Where'd you find the second? He I'm jumped out of the water. Come on! <laughs> You're lightweight in the nose because there's no water left. Lost a bunch of water. Now the oil's pouring out the bottom, so I think this one I think is it was no due for an oil change, so. probably, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, just a, yeah. All right, so it's Arpin's qualifying run. First one, see how he does. It won't go. It won't go. Oh, no, oh no. I win by default because I got the last running car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
we're in a bit of a predicament here because, uh, well, these gentlemen have destroyed two cars already and we haven't even got to race. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I sacrificed the car to be top qualifier. He did, he did find a second. I... Yeah. <laughs> so we have this car and we have a spare car, so we don't have cars for a three-man race. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the two bottom qualifiers. <laughs> you, you are so good this race, aren't you? <laughs> the two bottom qualifiers. You guys battle it out to race me. Three laps? Yeah, but, but also you guys have to make the cars survive so that we can have the final. But if we, they don't, then what? he doesn't have bragging rights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll still take top qualifier bragging rights. <laughs> <laughs> Orange. Oh, what the f What'd you do to my car, man? The anti-lock brakes. <laughs> you touched the brake pedal. The anti-lock brakes just kick in. I launched it up both berms. <laughs> you like that? Did you see me launch it? Our radiator's done. <laughs> well, I think we're officially done. No, no, no. <laughs> you win. Yeah, still, I guess, there's still I guess I won. Car. I didn't even get to do the final boss race. No. I think uh, Cole's, Cole's track is officially a uh, Crown Vic killer. Oh, it's, it's dirty. Man, I'm bummed. I've, I've really wanted to see somebody go against Ken. You did great, Zach. Oh, thanks, man. You're really good. Yeah. You got a good uh, hole shot. Yeah. I was trying. I tried to also, like, you know. Dormy? Yeah, a little bit. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. You, you know. You gotta do what you gotta do, man. Yeah, I tried to like, give you a little, like, brake bump, you know, like, so you'd go into my <laughs> rear end. Did yeah. You feel the rail you yeah, did you? Yeah, I felt it. And, I think uh, after that thing, I'm gonna go soak myself in a CBD MD <laughs> bath bomb at the hotel tonight. <laughs> Try and loosen back up again for this yeah, one. Yeah, there, 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 there were a few little impacts. Enough to, <laughs> enough to set off an airbag. <laughs> well, I think what I learned is uh, you two are both maniacs. Uh, you just compose yourselves really well in public. <laughs> I've never been accused of that before. So thank Composing myself well. Oh, well, thank you for having me out. And thank you, Cole, for letting everybody destroy your stuff. Yeah, no, that's that's what I do. And this is cool. We all, You're right. We all do need to gather together and fives all build around. the grassroots of Rally Cross Out. Because this is this is what it's all about. Thanks for having us. No, yeah. Absolutely. It. Next up, Natural World Games this weekend. 110 foot gap jump.